the same fear that would take the heart of me. You can absolutely see the fear in my eyes as my priest opponent plays my own cards against me. What an absolute thief. A day may come when the courage of men fails. When we forsake our friends and break all bonds of fellowship. Well, my courage has certainly failed because Dark Skies plus the crazed Netherwing plus Nether Breath was not enough to clear this board. To clear my own demons, by the way, that he stole. So yes, my courage failed. But it is not this day! This day we fight! Aragorn telling me to fight, but how can I do that when my opponent continues to steal my cards, playing another Ebonlock? By all that you hold dear on this good earth, I bid you stand, men of the West! Well, Aragorn still trying to motivate us there, still trying to get us to fight, to not give up. Do you know what? We're going to listen to Aragorn and we're going to keep fighting. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another video. Today we are playing Too Many Misplays. That's a great name, by the way. Too Many Misplays, Dragon Demon Lock on the standard mode ladder. So why that clip at the start of the video? Um, firstly, Lord of the Rings Return of the King is one of my favourite films of all time. Uh, I loved the whole Lord of the Rings trilogy. I thought it was fantastic. Maybe at some point in the future I'll do movie reviews. I, I, I don't know. Um, but I felt that little clip there with Aragorn giving his speech, trying to motivate his forces to, to stand up and fight, uh, going into this massive battle as the underdog, uh, trying to rise the spirits of his men to fight for him. It just felt very, very relevant um, when looking at that game against the priest. And we're going to look at that game in full in just a moment. Because I felt with this deck going in as, as the underdog against this priest that had significant resources, board clears, he, he had the, the Galakrond hero power, so generating, you know, you know, more ways to cause trouble on the board. Uh, it felt it felt like the priest had unlimited resources. That's what it felt like because he kept stealing my minions, in particular, uh, stealing my Ebonlock card uh, and then getting the Prime Legendary multiple times. And uh, it just felt that I was uh, struggling to gain any kind of foothold against the priest, struggling to keep the board in in any sense. Um, because every time I'd play stuff, it'd either get cleared away or it gets stolen, and, and that was very, very frustrating. So, uh, Aragorn's speech there was certainly relevant, because, you know, I learned from Aragorn. I didn't give up. I was able to hang in there until the end, and as you watch this video, you will see what happens uh, at the end of the game. Now this deck has some very interesting card inclusions. Let's quickly cover them. Um, first of all, Conjured Mirage. That is a three attack, 10 health taunt. The minion costs four. The stats look amazing. So you'd be thinking, hey, why doesn't everybody play this in their decks? Well, the thing is, at the start of your turn, uh, this minion is shuffled back into your deck. Uh, so why play it at all? Well, this deck can, can draw through itself very, very quickly at times, and there's a good chance in long games you will hit fatigue before your opponent. So this is a way of avoiding taking fatigue damage, right? You, you play it, it gets shuffled. If they don't kill it, obviously. It gets shuffled. Uh, you draw it, you don't take that fatigue damage, even though you've got no other cards left in your deck. It has use there, it has value. Um, other interesting inclusions in this deck, uh, you've got Frizz, um, Kindle Roost. So discounting your dragons, and you have some pretty cool dragons in this deck, uh, Zazaku being the key one, and Sathravar. Sathravar on Ebonlock, uh, getting multiple copies of that card uh, playable means multiple prime copies too. 
that's pretty awesome. Karanda. So here we go, that game that I promised you against the priest. Let's have some fun. <laughs> now, this is of course a quest warlock, so we're going to keep the quest. And what are we hoping for against the priest? I mean, drawing the brood mother there, not a great start. We don't have anything else significant to do on turn two beyond playing Sinister Deal to get a lackey. So we just tap, right? We just tap. Oh, Twisted Knowledge, though, is um, is a pretty pretty cool card. It, it, it can really find you solutions to problems. It can find you a Twisting Nether, which is pretty impressive. Uh, so I'm a big fan of Twisted Knowledge. And Zazaku there picked up. Golden Zazaku, may I add. May I add? Golden Zazaku. It's very important. And turn four, we play it. I mean, it's kind of unfortunate that Alex Straza and Zazaku are already in our hand. Oh, and there's another win. Praise Netherwing in our hand too. So we're not getting any significant discounts in our deck in terms of dragons, but fine. He doesn't know that. He doesn't know that my RNG is terrible. And it is turn six. So, faced with the Abyssal Summoner versus the Broodmother, I think Summoner is just better here. Uh, it gets more stats on the board. And by the looks of things, he's only putting... Well, he's putting nothing on the board. That's a dormant minion. Does nothing huh, on my next turn. So if that's his only response, we're pushing 10 damage to the face, which I'm quite happy about. And at this point in the game, you start to think to yourself, I've got a chance of winning. I'm pushing ridiculous amounts of damage. You pretend you're a, you're a handlock with, a, with an 8-8 child on the board, going face, like the good old days. Our soul mirror, though, ruins our day, unfortunately. Shadow Flame could come in handy if he somehow develops a wide board uh, later in the game. And Shadow Council, replace your hand with random demons, give them plus two, plus two. That could be fun. Maybe not practical, but it could be fun. Okay, so... Our hand is, is really getting quite full up here. Do we... Are we tempted to play the Shadow Council? No. We have Zazaku in hand. We need Zazaku. We do not want to replace Zazaku with other random crap. Certainly not. Power in but the priest... Doing priest things. Look at the recovery. Look at the board state now, compared to how it was a couple of turns ago, when I had that 8-8 that was smashing face. Um, I've lost the board, he's got the board, he's healing up, undoing all of that damage that I did. Wow, well played. So we've got to give him a well played for that recovery, right? And uh, may I just add, this is not me being salty. Uh, the priest deck that he's playing, I love playing that deck, by the way. I love playing priest on standard mode. Not on wild, but on standard. Feels a bit more balanced, a bit fairer. Uh, one combo that's worth mentioning in this deck is uh, the Fell Lord and Plot Twist. It's uh, pretty effective if you want to put stuff on the board and then rush those minions into enemy minions. Good at clearing the board, basically. 
course, it's relying on the fact that you've got minions actually left in your deck and not just spells. If he's building a wall here. That's going to be pretty awkward to get through. Well, we can put a roadblock in the way. That's going to help a little bit. But I'm really conscious of the fact that it's a priest. So he's probably got answers in hand. That's an answer. Time rip, shadow of death, silence. You name it, he'll have it. And he's a Galakron priest, so once he gets Galakron in play, he's going to be generating answers for the entire game. And that's pretty scary. Our resources are quite limited. Once our demons are gone, once our dragons are gone, we, we are we're done for. Uh, whereas it feels like with his Galakron hero power, that priest can keep generating resources. Uh, useful cards that can be played on a given turn. Useful solutions to problems that can be generated. Okay, Shadow Flame coming in handy here. That's not exactly how I wanted to utilise it. We've lost a 9-9 taunt, which is relevant. Um, could I have gone about that in a different way? Could I have played the Craze Netherwing and then Shadow Flamed? We are all maybe. But maybe the Craze Netherwing will hold value later in this game for the AoE. I don't know. Well, is there a better time? Is there a better time? I don't know. May as well go for it now. We get a 6-6 down, so we've got some value out of Zazaku. He's at 4 attack, which means Shadow Word Death, Shadow Word Pain cannot hurt him. He can be silenced. Can he be stolen? Yes, Soul Mirror. It's the equivalent of stealing. Now I'm okay with this play. Providing my Zazaku stays alive, but no, this is a priest. Of course, he's probably got a spell or two that deal with it. Yep, penance, of course. And Holy Nova. Big commitment, but the result is my opponent has his own Zazaku, the Warped, on the board. So, in response, the Fell Lord, what can you give me to kill off that board? I'll get some healing. And a Doomsayer, of course. The end is coming. We complete the quest. I guess that's good. And um, we have a board of stuff which we can rush into his stuff. We have a Doobsayer on board. Uh, for a moment, I was thinking, oh my god, that Doobsayer is going to go off and kill my Fell Lord. Uh, I, wonder... I then realised that, no, actually, at the end of the turn, these minions all die. So it's fine. It's absolutely fine. But initially, when you see a Doobsayer, you're always shocked, aren't you? you there's always that moment of, of horror. You know, of, oh my god, it, it, it's going to screw me. But no, no. The Fell Lord is safe and he's alive. Now, he probably won't be safe going forward because the priest is probably going to kill him on this turn. You think this is your wow, Morazond. Wow, he gets the plot twist. That's crazy value. So, in conclusion, you know, this priest is very much a thief. Just stealing my cards, stealing my mechanics, my strategies. Thought steal, yeah, of course. Probably taking something really good. So every time I pose a problem, he has 
not only the solution to clear my board, but he develops my own stuff against me as well. I mean, I, I don't think Conjured Mirage does anything here. It's going to stop some damage going to my face, maybe. But it's not going to do enough, right? And it's at this point in the game where you start to lose a bit of hope. You see the priest with all of their answers to the problems and you're thinking, I can't win this. You just cannot outlast them. I will split your Sathravar. From my deck. You think this is your and Murazon copied three times. One on board, one in hand, one into the deck. Unbelievable. Well, the Doom said does his job. But still, there is a copy in hand, there is a copy in the deck of Morizond. And of course, uh, Galakrond, with that hero power, will probably generate multiple copies more of, of Morizond going forward. So again, you start to lose hope. You start to despair somewhat. I will act as your skilled dragon lord. So no doubt, when he does play the Galakrond, it will be fully invoked. It will remove four minions from my side of the board. I do not know why I am plot twisting here, but you know I've lost any discount that I had. I had a zero cost Alex Straza, it now costs nine. I don't know why. Um, and we get Keladin, which we can play here. It's not the best time, or rather the best value. We only kill two of his minions and we get rid of one of our own, but at least it's cleared the board. Now playing the Ebon Lock there is actually quite a scary thing because um, I'm really scared that he'll Shadow Madness it. All that, oh yeah, forgot for a moment. He's got Morizond in hand, of course. <laughs> there is so, much so he gets the even lock. Sure, another thought steal, why not? Okay, um, how do we deal with this? There's an 8-8 on the board that's going to be hitting our face. Siphoned Soul, thank you. So zero cost Siphoned Soul, really good. If we're going to have any hope of outlasting him, we need to play Sathravar here. I will split your soul apart. There's actually a beautiful entrance from Sathravar. What does he say? I will split your soul apart? That's beautiful. Banishment. So I'll kill off my own uh, Eben Lock, kill his one too, because I'm worried he will uh, Shadow Madness my Eben Lock, uh, or copy his Eben Lock. Uh, that, that's that's a, a, a worry. So I need to kill mine and his off as quickly as possible. We're still left with one of my own Eben Locks on the board, though. So please don't Shadow Madness it, Mr. Priest. I wonder. Thinking? Thinking about how to steal more of my minions. Hmm. Okay. Dark skies. Thought steal even lock. Sure. So this is really going to be a battle 
of the primes, right? Once these even locks are dying, it's going to be, yes, a battle of the prime legendaries. Oh, Jaraxxus. Yeah, we instant pick Jaraxxus. Twisted Knowledge or a farm? I think it has to be Twisted Knowledge. Uh, to find Twisting Nethers. To deal with the demons that are going to come out from um, his prime cards. Alright, there's big there's one big wave of demons. Deal with that. On wings of destruction they come. So you saw me snap pick Lord Jaraxxus there. I probably should have taken the Shadow Flame. But you know me. I love me some Jaraxxus. Jaraxxus is just one of my favourite cards in the game. You face Jaraxxus! You face Jaraxxus, Eridor Lord of the Burning Legion. And I won't do the laugh, because I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. Definitely not worthy to do the laugh. Of course he's got an answer. Well, here's my demons from my deck, my cards. You stole them. So we're going to do our absolute best here to clear this board off. Um, I, we're not going to get a full clear by the looks of things. But we clear off most stuff and I think that's the best we can do here. We played Jaraxxus so we're at 15 health which is going to put us in a bit of danger. Uh, given that there is an 8 attack minion on board. He's probably stealing either even lock or the prime. There is so much untapped yeah. power. Stole another even lock. Why not? Give yourself another prime. Give yourself some more demons. So looking really, really bad for us here. But there's the twisting nether. Where have you been all game? We really needed that Twisting Nether, uh, what, two turns ago. But we had to improvise with the, the Nether Wing and the Dark Skies and the Nether Breath. Okay. We can play the Prime next turn to get ourselves some board presents. This seems like quite a weak turn on his part. I mean, the minion he's developed is terrifying in the long in the long game. Um, given the value uh, he can get from from the spells generated by it, but at least on that turn, it's not going to kill me with its two attack. So that's absolutely fine. Meanwhile, we have quite a substantial... Oh, Shadow Madness, of course. Of course. So continuing to outvalue me, continuing to steal my stuff. However... You are too late. Oh, that's interesting. Is Promise. So you draw your Galakrond, probably setting up for next turn to clear my board, right? However, Alex Straza, bringing life, or death in this case. What a finish to that game. Unbelievable. Lord Jaraxxus gets the win. Alex Straza was our key to victory. Feels pretty amazing. Alright, let's look at one final game. Let's go. Let's have some fun. Okay, going up against a hunter here. 
So this deck does very, very well against slower decks. Um, particularly if you can get the Ebonlock value uh, with um, Sathravar and get multiple copies of the Prime. Uh, you, you can get substantial board presence multiple times against slower decks. That can often be enough to win. Against faster decks, it is a case of needing to survive, needing to clear board with your AoE, and then hoping that you reach a point where you can play your Abyssal Summoners, your Brood Mothers, which cost six, and if you're lucky enough to get to turn eight, your Enhanced Dreadlord. If the Enhanced Dreadlords can uh, can stick on the board, uh, there is there, there's substantial taunts in themselves. Uh, if they can stick stick around for a bit, hopefully uh, you negate enough face damage that that you can make a comeback. And of course, when the Enhanced Dreadlords die, you get Life Steal minions, and that hopefully can get you back into the game. So I think that's the strategy against aggro, but what I've been finding generally against Demon Hunter, for example, is that I'm dead very, very quickly. Too quickly. And I can't mount enough of a comeback. I can't make any kind of recovery. That's what I'm finding against aggro. It's very frustrating. Already we're down to 17 health. It's his turn four. I mean, that's pretty, pretty scary. Make that 15 health on turn 4. Twisted Knowledge. Maybe Nether Breath is, is, is excellent here. And I guess we go with Valdris. Feeling happier now at 19 health. Next turn we can coin out a summoner. Get a taunt on board. Maybe that will help us. Please don't be Huffer. Good. Thank you. It's Leoc. That, awesome. that deserves an emote. <laughs> because he was obviously hoping for Huffer. He was hoping to do the four damage. <laughs> Look what I okay. We've now survived to a point where we could start developing taunts. That's really, really important. Because if this strategy pays off, this is the turning point in the game for us. We have to be mindful of that hero power doing two damage every turn. If he's smart, he'll press the button every turn. Um, we still have Nether Breath left in this deck, so we still have healing. We just need to uh, draw into it. We have Alexstrasza for our own face, if needed. <laughs> Um, okay, I, I am conscious about attacking because of the secrets that are still up there. It says Freezing Trap, so I didn't want to go face in case it's Freezing Trap or Misdirection. And I don't want to attack the minion in case it's one of those other secrets that, that trigger when you attack a minion. So I'm being overly cautious here. I don't know if I should be. I don't know if this is a misplay or not. Leponome is really concerning because of the damage that it'll do to our own face just on the death rattle. Uh, okay, so we go face. Brave enough to go face. It's not Freezing Trap. Um, so basically, it's not Misdirection. So basically, we're safe to go face. We just don't want to attack the minions. I, I think that's the logic here. Based on those three secrets that it could be. So the reason to plot twist here is to get healing. Um, yep, there's some healing. There's some more healing. So, that is one way of coming back against aggro. Plot twist, rude mother healing. It's pretty awesome. Still quite far off from quest completion, but I, I suspect that quest completion will not matter uh, in this game.
Oh, wow. That was pretty significant. He really cannot afford to face tank 7 attack here. Yeah, that's good for him. Okay. 14 health versus 11 health. But we've got these 8 cost taunts. We could just play them one after another. We can even play Sathravar on one of them if needed. Nothing but a bunch of big bears. He's out of resources now. Sure, he can press that hero power button every turn. But that's not going to stop me from developing big threats that can go face and hopefully see out the game before his hero power can kill us. Uh, I really, really want to play Zazaku here. I really do. But, um... I don't think it's the right play. I found a new yeah, I, I just think it's safer to play another taunt, just in case. I don't know if they run silence or not. Just playing that taunt, second taunt, makes me feel a lot safer. Did you press the button? But you're dead! Well. Oh, he's not happy. He's really not happy. I don't think he was expecting to lose that game in the way that he did. And do you know what? That is the lesson to be learnt with this deck. Uh, you can make some quite spectacular comebacks with your taunts. Uh, with healing from the Broodmother, sometimes that little bit of healing that you get from double Broodmother from uh, Plot Twist can just be enough to help you survive against aggro. Uh, so yes, it, with this deck in the early turns, it can look like you're in trouble. It can look like you're being overrun by aggressive opponents and taking a lot of face damage. But yes, the comebacks can be real and they can be effective. As you saw against the priest, when it was looking absolutely hopeless, when he kept stealing the even lock cards and generating uh, the prime cards and getting big demons back onto the board constantly again and again and again, it was looking so hopeless. But Alex Straza helped us win the game because we were able to, at, at one point, just keep a few minions on the board uh, that he hadn't cleared. Uh, surprisingly, and with Alex Straza putting him to 15, it was enough to finish the game. So yes, surprise lethals from Alex Straza uh, is, is just another great way uh, of seeing out your games. Uh, the other cool thing, of course, in this deck is the Zaku the Warped. Uh, it has to be removed. It has to be dealt with because they can't attack your face. If they hit your face with Zazaku on the board, um, you start generating those 6-6 six, six minions. So Zazaku can pose a real problem for your opponent if they don't have uh, an immediate way. Not, not, let's deal with it in two turns or three turns, but an immediate way of getting rid of it. Uh, because unless they get rid of it, they can't go face. And finally, uh, Sathravar, of course. Sathravar on Ebonlock. Sathravar on, I don't know, Abyssal Summoner could actually be relevant, uh, depending on the board. Sathravar on Enhanced Dreadlord. Sathravar on Zazaku could be pretty interesting. There's, some, there's lots of good Sathravar targets in this deck, but um, Sathravar on Ebonlock seems to be the, the best option to go for. Um, how do you play Ebonlock and Sathravar on the same turn because the total mana cost is 11? Well, maybe you've got the coin handy, so that, that's always useful. Or you've completed your quest, you uh, play your hero power to tap uh, and get either Sathravar or Ebonlock for zero. So there's, there's always that option too. 
Okay, thank you very much for joining me everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We did take Aragorn's advice at the start. We persevered, we kept going, we did not give up, and it did lead to very positive results. Yeah. So, until next time, take care of yourselves, please stay safe, and best of luck to you on the ladder. I will see you all again very soon, as always, for more standard or one-mode fun.